Hello Aqua friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Nicole Cordemage and we are going to do a realistic dog painting today. The first step is to have a very detailed sketch to work with. Congratulations, you're 70% there. With a very good sketch, you will ensure a successful painting for your skill level. We have guidelines to follow and it is very important. Do not skimp on this step. Make sure that you have your proportions correct. And the second step is to work on our first layer. I am working on this dog wet on wet. And let me introduce you to this dog. This is actually a five and a half month old puppy. Her name is Bruli and she is one of my co-workers dog that I got commissioned to paint. She is a pit curry mix and she is just adorable. She is actually very multicolored and um, was a challenge for me to paint this dog because of her coloring. There's lots of different colors in her fur and uh, a lot of layers to uh, achieve this multi-color effect. So the first layer is just all about laying down the colors that you see in your reference photo. So some of the colors that I used, especially for the more golden areas, um, there's a lot of gold on her paws and on her body. I used raw sienna. I used Van Dyke Brown, burnt sienna, burnt umber. I also used sepia. Like I said, this dog has many, many different browns uh, in her fur. So what I did for the head, I am doing the same techniques for the body, getting that first layer down. So I go about my first layer, mostly wet on wet. I'm wetting the paper first, dropping in all these colors so that you have a very soft effect to work with. So that your underpainting is established and you kind of know where all these colors are going to go. The third step is the second layer. So the second layer, we're building up the colors, being a little bit more darker with establishing where our shadows are gonna go. So I'm concentrating on just the head of the dog right now. So as I work on each section, I'm wetting it first and then I'm dropping in these darker colors so that we have soft brush strokes. So let's talk about this stage. This is known as the ugly stage in watercolor because we are only working on our second layer of paint and it's kind of hard to see how this is gonna look like this in the end. And you just have to trust your instincts and go with your plan. Always stick to the plan and Always remember that watercolor is built up on many, many layers. And each layer builds upon itself and that realism will start coming through. Even though it doesn't look like much now, you just have to keep applying the colors. My fourth step is working on the values. This is going to be a layer of adding your darks and trying to get them as dark as they need to be and lifting up your highlights where you need to. So I would work on a section, I would let it dry, I'd come back, I'd do my lifting 
So this could actually be done in many layers depending on how dark you, you need your hues to be. So as, as you're adding in these darker colors and these shadow areas, you're always checking with your reference photo and trying to get that as close as possible uh, to get a realistic painting and for the pa painting to look like the dog that you're actually trying to paint. To get his characteristics or her characteristics Uh, her markings, it's important because you don't want it to be just any dog, you want it to be their dog. So once that all dries, I'm coming in with my flat brush and I'm lifting up all the highlights in the lighter areas in the dog's fur. So I have a wet brush and I'm going through and I'm touching up on those areas that need to be lighter and then taking a tissue to lift the paint off. At this point, I'm gonna add in the colors that I see in the eyes. I started off with a glaze of burnt sienna. Her eyes are a warm brown. So that burnt sienna will ensure that it has that warmth. And you wanna capture their personality. She's a very fun-loving dog, loves to give kisses, loves to play with her younger five-pound sister which I actually also painted. That one is a Yorkie. And she is a ball of fun. So as I'm building up these darker colors, I am sort of using a watery mixture and a number six or a number four brush. And I'm actually painting in tiny, tiny brush marks, tiny hairs, making these very small strokes. I know it's very tedious, but there is no way of getting around painting a realistic dog without hours of your time. <laughs> There's just no way. I mean, if you want to be able to paint a subject in, you know, an hour or less, then you're going to have to have a loose watercolor style with very little detail. I am a tight painter. I paint realistically most of the time, although I love loose watercolor. It's just not something I seem to be able to do very well because my, my mind is not built that way. I love the detail <laughs> so it's worth it in the long run so 
So notice as I'm lifting up these areas, how automatically that just adds a three-dimensional look. Along the edge of the ear, I lift it up and now I'm adding darker tones and all of a sudden, wow, it's just really, really got that curve in there. Those tonal values make a huge difference. So I'm adding on layers and layers of color with these tiny, tiny brush marks. Always painting in the direction the fur goes, folks. Always painting in the direction the fur goes. So at this point, I'm also picking up some of my Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White and getting in those tiny, tiny white hairs that she has on her face. And being very careful of my placement of those to match where they are in the reference photo. Okay, so I'm always looking back. I know I need to go darker on that right side of her face. I'm taking up my sepia and I'm getting that brown as dark as it needs to get. Lifting up by the mouth, under the nose. Now I switched to a mop brush and I just kind of pounded into the color to give it a very soft blend. I just love that little mop brush, especially for landscapes, but it works good for transitioning fur as well, or in this case, the nose where there's lots of shadow. Okay, so that mop brush, I came in again with that dark patch on the right hand side and I'm just dabbing and dabbing and dabbing just to get a smooth sort of transition there. You could also wet that area like I did, that'll soften the fur. If there's any area that's too harsh, I would wait for it to dry first. And then if you just go over that area with some clean water, it will soften your brush strokes and you'll have a smoother transition. Going in on those eyes, adding those highlights. So this is basically all about the values now. I'm still working on values. I'm still lifting, I'm still adding paint. So for however many layers it's gonna take for you to get there, that's the fourth stage of this painting is getting your values correct. So you notice all these teeny tiny lines painted in the direction the fur goes.
darkening up those eyes. And getting the fleshy tones that I see in there. And when you're doing eyes, always make sure that you have the shadow of the eyelid on the top part of their eye. There has to be a dark line there to make that realistic and have their eyes really pop. So what I did to the head, I am now working on the body and doing the same process with my values layer on the rest of his body. I don't know why I wanna say his all the time. It's her body, it's a girl. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry Robin. <laughs> okay. So I'm using a lot of brush strokes on the body, getting those multicolors in. And the more we work on this value step, the more realistic the dog is looking and we're getting out of that ugly stage. She's a cutie for sure. And she loves squeaky toys, just like my dogs. And isn't it funny that I've painted many commissions, but I've never painted my own dogs yet. I'm too busy. <laughs> but when I finish a painting like this, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. I need to do this for Lulu and Truffle, but I never, that'll have to be on my to-do list, I guess. <laughs> Now I love the way this dog just pops off of the white paper and I decided to leave it as is and not put any background or shadows or anything like that. I just wanted the focus to be on the dog. So there's that line I was telling you about. That shadow needs to be in there. And notice how that just really makes a huge difference. His eyes are just, her, her, her eyes are just looking more and more realistic. Getting those highlights back. A tip of that ear was a little too sharp and so I was pulling paint up there. So the fifth and final step is your detail step. Any final tweaking that we need to do. So I actually used my acrylic pen along with the PH Martin white to put in those highlights in the eyes and, and make them look wet and just very full of life. Let me know what you guys think about this type of painting in the description below. Thanks for watching.